Welcome back. Last time we discovered what plugins were. This time, we're going to go a little bit deeper. In order to understand how plugins work, you first need to have a basic understanding of MIDI. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's the language that musical devices use to talk to each other. When first introduced, the most common use of MIDI involved hardware, drum machines, and keyboards. Say you laid out the perfect beat on your drum machine, but it lacked other instruments. Through the use of a MIDI cable and the proper settings on both units, you could program patterns using multiple instruments on your keyboard and have it sync to the pattern on your drum machine. The way this is possible is through MIDI messages. There's two types of MIDI messages, channel and system. Channel messages are communicated between MIDI devices on a specified channel. The two types of channel messages are voice and mode. Voice messages include note on, note off, velocity, pitch bend, program change, modulation, and sustain. Mode messages include MIDI mode, local on, local off, and reset all controllers. The second type of MIDI message is system. These messages are non-performance data. There are three types, system exclusive, system common, and system real-time. System-exclusive messages include patch or bank dump. System-common messages are song select, MIDI time code, and song position pointer. System-real-time messages include MIDI clock, song start and stop, and active sensing. To really dumb it down, when I hit this key, push this button, or turn this knob, this happens. In the last video, I showed you how to use a plugin. Open a MIDI or instrument track, select your plugin, then you're ready to use it. Or are you? Seeing as we're dealing with software inside of your computer, you need a way to trigger the sounds and functions. You can A, use a pencil tool to literally draw a sequence into your DAW's MIDI timeline, or B, invest in a MIDI controller. The three types of MIDI controllers we'll concentrate on are keyboard, pad, and what I like to refer to as knob and fader. Keyboard controllers look and feel like real keyboards but have no internal sounds or audio output. Examples of keyboard controllers are M-Audio's Axiom, Akai's MPK, and my personal favorite, Novation's Remote Series. Pad controllers look just like drum and sampler machines but once again have no internal sounds nor do they have sampling or sequencing capability. As for those, you have the Akai MPD and Korg Pad Control Series. Lastly, you have knob and fader controllers. These are used for controlling certain functions in your software by physically touching knobs and faders. Some of the more popular KF controllers are Akai's APC40, Novation's Zero, and Behringer's BCR and BCF Series. One last thing. Every MIDI controller connects to your computer using a USB cord. Through this, it transmits all MIDI messages. For those wondering, we'll cover these in another video. So far we've learned what are plugins, plugin formats, what's MIDI, how MIDI is used, and about MIDI controllers. But how does this information help you create music? The answer lies within your DAW. Your digital audio workstation, or DAW, is where all of the magic happens. It possesses all of the recording, sampling, sequencing, and hosting capability for all of your audio and MIDI needs. Combined with a MIDI controller, you have full control of your music. Still confused? Allow me to demonstrate. Today I'm using Machine strictly as a pad controller. As I hit the pads, it's sending channel messages such as note on, note off, velocity, and aftertouch to addictive drums. When using my Novation remote, I'm sending the same channel messages to Lounge Lizard along with Pitch Bend. But I don't care for the patch that I used, so I'll switch it to another. This is program change. I'm going to drop Ableton's amp plugin on the bass track and adjust the gain, presence, volume, and dry and wet settings from the APC40. I can also
also adjust the track volume, master volume, panning, and even start and stop here as well. Just like that, you should now have a better understanding of how plugins work. We'll go deeper into this discussion at another time. And once again, that's it. Hopefully you learned something and enjoyed yourself in the process. If you did, please like and share the video. If you haven't done so, click the subscribe button, then visit the website at playingwithplugins.com. See you next time.